Hi, we welcome you to the Companion Chapel. I'm Tammy, this is Michael, and we are Bible teachers. We examine the Bible by covering each book chapter by chapter and verse by verse for you to absorb the precious subject matter being conveyed. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the one great subject of the Word of God. The whole Bible is about Him directly or indirectly, and everything centers in and around Him. Jesus Christ is the master key to your inner peace, your salvation of God. Jesus Christ is your personal key to all answers and explanations as we travel through this world on our way home to God, our Heavenly Father. Jesus Christ will show you the way. Do you feel there is more to God's Word than you are being taught? We invite you to discover the Word of God with us. And with that, we're going to say a prayer, and we repent in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, perfect, precious name, and we pray for wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, strength, in Jesus' perfect name. And here we are, all the way up to chapter 22 in Genesis, and we're just going to get right down into it, Tammy. Go ahead, chapter 20, no, chapter 23, Genesis. So, chapter 23, 23. verse 1. Go ahead, Tammy. And Sarah was 107 and 20 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. So Sarah is 127 years old. And Sarah is the matriarch and quite the woman. Um, you're going to find out if you read all your scripture. The only place in scripture where a woman's age is mentioned at death is here. And for Sarah, she was a special person. God chose her from the age before. God knew her. God knew she could handle it. Sarah was a special woman, a great role model for us. She's taught us some good lessons, not putting up with malicious gossip, not putting up with mocking. Um, and she's always stood by her man. Didn't taunt him or make fun of him. Sarah was awesome. And God shows us that by the only woman ever in the Bible who acknowledged that her age at her death. Go ahead, Tammy, too. And Sarah died in Kerjath Arba, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Man, he would have been crying the big crocodile tears because that was his girl all those years, all those things that they had to go through, through Egypt, dealing with the Pharaoh there, um, through Amibelagek, the the president of Palestine dealing with him just having this big giant community and having this girl with him stability it was the greatest thing because you can't do anything if you don't have stability remember a divided house cannot stand and Sarah and Abraham were not divided they were as one as you're supposed to be in the eyes of God when you get together with a woman so here they are and check it out they're in Hebron and I know it said something else before, but it said that is Hebron. It said Kira Jarba. And it says it is Hebron, and it's Hebron today. So this lesson brings us up to present times. Hebron means alliance, and there is a heathen alliance back then. There was a heathen alliance there. It's the Canaanites, the Hittites, and 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 here we have heathen alliances there. Now they're still fighting over this spot, Hebron today. Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Go ahead, Tammy, three. And Abraham stood up from before his dead and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying. So there's a funeral going on. The sons of Heth, these are this um, heathen alliance here in Hebron. It's documented in other places, but we're just going to continue teaching this to, not to get off the subject being conveyed here. So Abraham stood up before the dead, before Sarah and leaning this actually means he was actually <clears throat> mourning her and he's leaning over her, like leaning over her face and then he stood up and acknowledged the crowd and let's see what happens I am a stranger and a sojourner with you give me a possession of a burying place with you that I may bury my dead out of my sight Okay, so he's looking for a plot, he's, he's looking for a cemetery, and he wants one separate for his 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 wife, who he's mourning, and he's just loved to pieces. Go ahead, Tam 5. And the children of Heth answered Abraham, saying unto him. Go ahead, Tam 6. 
Hear us, my Lord, thou art a mighty prince among us in the choice of our sepulchres. Bury thy dead, none of us shall withhold from thee his sepulchre, but that thou mayest bury thy dead. Here we're getting into something. Now, we'll, we'll give you a little groundwork who's all here. Remember the Nephilim that were taught, and the Nephilim of the fallen angels as written in the book of Jude, and Noah's flood had to wipe out those Nephilim. They were giants. They are later called Raphium. They came into the Canaanites, or the Can Canaanites, and they all settled in this area where Abraham's whole extended family is. Um, to document even more, Joshua chapter 15, round verse 13, we'll see who's all here. And it's Arba, or the son of, sons of Anak, which had been infiltrated by these Raphium, these fallen angels, these giants, these, peop these people who left their first estate. They weren't born innocent of woman. And it's one of Satan's attacks on the seed line. And also Joshua 21.11, that is of Anakim, or Ben Anak, or sons of Anak. And these are the Raphium, the fallen angels. And they're here, and, and they're doing what they're doing, as it was written in Genesis chapter 6, and Book of Jude, and other places. We've thoroughly taught that up to chapter 23 here. And so here, he's trying to make a deal. And here's my Lord, he's buttering him up. And we're going to find out that this guy, he's buttering up, it, buttering up Abraham. His name is Ephron. And he's, he's a big shot here in the area, because he's doing the talking. And Ephron... Just his name means like uh, like fun, like gentle. And there's something that's really going to come together here in this lesson. Now just watch this. Go ahead, Tammy. Let's let the Bible teach itself here. And Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Heth. So we're, we're in this land. These people are have made up their own gods. In other words, they're godless. They've made it up themselves, but they're getting along with Abraham. They have a lot of respect for Abraham, and Abraham's bowing himself down. He's showing respect to them, even to all the people around. There's a lot of people here, and let's go ahead, Tammy, 8. And he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zohar. Okay, so... Abraham wants to talk to Ephron. Ephron is the guy in charge. Go ahead, Tammy. That he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he hath, which is in the end of his field. For as much money as it is worth, he shall give it to me for a possession of a burying place amongst you. So they went and got Ephron, and we know that Ephron means fond like gentle. And remember, these are men of renown power of renown heathenism of moral degradation but abram's got things under control because god's with them abram's whole massive community is well taken care of here but this is the promised land it's where god will wanted abraham and this whole israel to start and remember this is an important point they've been called hebrews already but there's no jews therefore hebrew does not mean jew that's a very big lesson, and that'll come together very soon in the next few chapters. Um, okay, go ahead, Tammy. And Ephron dwelt among the children of Heth, and Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Heth, even of all that went in at the gate of his city, saying. So, listen to this. Now, don't read over this. This is big. Ephron dwelt among the children of Heth, Ephraim was a Hittite. We have the Canaanites here. And we have, we know the fallen angels have infiltrated them. They're called Raphium. And Raphium literally means giants. They were big, huge, physical people. And we have, have an audience. Okay, let's read this carefully. And Ephraim the Hittite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Heth. Even all that went at the gate of his city saying. Now, that's very important. The gate of the city is where the judgment takes place. That's where the judges sat, at the gate. That's where you're getting in, or you're getting booted out, or you're going to the clink, jail. 
It would have been like a courtyard area. And there was a big audience here, tons of witnesses of all different tribes. That's very important not to read over that. Abraham is making a big deal of this because this is an example to us. And of course, God is divine inspiration to Abraham. Abraham and his actions. Go ahead, Tammy. Nay, my Lord, hear me. The field give I thee, and the cave that is therein. I give it thee, in the presence of the sons of my people, give I it thee. Bury thy dead. So, these people are saying, you know, Abraham wants to make a deal here. He wants to buy it. Now, in this crowd of people, you would have thousands of witnesses. You would have big shot businessmen. You would have the legal community and the legal religious community. And and they're saying, Ephron's saying, no, no, it's okay. Now, this is a type here. Remember, in Daniel chapter 11, 21, we see that Satan comes in peacefully and prosperously. Satan comes in, Satan's greatest trick is to make it think that he never exists. He comes in as the instead of Christ. This is a type, someone that seems so gentle and so nice. This guy's not going to turn around and backstab me. And watch how Abram protects himself, and this is a lesson for us today. Remember, even the nice guy up in the pulpit, he's so nice. He's, he's fun-like, he's gentle. Is he teaching you the Bible? Or is he just up there for some ching and a nice pension? Well, like, what's going on? Let's just use this as an example. And here we go. Nay, nay, my Lord, hear me. I give you this field. The cave therein, Machpala. It even means, Machpala itself means double portion or double. I, I'm giving it to you. Just take it, Abraham. You're like, in the presence of my sons and all these people, all these legal people here, I give it to you. Bury your dead there. Let's see what happens, Tam 12. And Abraham bowed down himself before the people of the land. Here he goes, Abraham, showing respect to everybody. Does he like these people? Maybe not. Of course, he doesn't like everybody. And we don't like everybody either. We love their soul, not what they're doing or what their thoughts and intents are. Abraham knows. And God's teaching us a huge lesson here. Abraham humbles himself again. He's not getting all uptight and calling his special forces in going, no, 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 man, no, man. You know, no, Abraham is gentle. You've seen the deals Abraham's made in the past and watch this flow. Go ahead, Tim. And he spake unto Ephron in the audience of the people of the land, saying, But if thou wilt give it, I pray thee, hear me. I will give thee money for the field. Take it of me, and I will bury my dead there. Abraham wants a contract, he wants a deed, he wants it signed, he wants it in the, what does we call that, the city of chambers? No, city of commerce, city hall. He wants it in the city hall, written, signed, sealed, this belongs to me. It's not like, because if Abraham doesn't get this contract, maybe Ephron's sons later want to make a road over there. And wait a minute, that's Abraham's though. You know, well, he didn't pay for it. Dad just gave it to him. And, uh, you know, we're just going to take it back. Or, you know, we're going to make a dirt bike track over there or something like that. Like, once it is signed and sealed, you have to remember, it might seem all good at once. That go applies for any contract on planet Earth. I seem like a really nice person. Or even go this far. That preacher that's teaching you the Bible or whatever church you're going to, he's sealing the contract between you and and your eternal soul in the judgment of God. Are you biblically literate? Are you trusting a nice, gentle guy? Or are you getting taught the Bible? Now here we're getting taught a contract. And a contract, signed, sealed, deed. Go ahead, Tammy, and see what happens. And Ephron answered Abraham, saying unto him, Go ahead, Tam, 15. My Lord, hearken unto me. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that betwixt me and thee? Bury therefore thy dead. He's saying, listen, man, we're, we're both rich people here. Abraham, you, you have such big riches. And, you know, 400 bucks between us or 400 shekels of silver. What is that between us? It means nothing. He's trying to be so gentle and just, just take it, Abraham. Bury, bury your dead there. 
it's fine it's okay man like we don't need any money exchange we're all friends here let me tell you a week could pass it's good 10 years could pass it's good but i'm telling you it will turn sour someday and this is a great example because they're still having shootouts and bombings in the same place hebron over the same area over the same sacred grave site where sarah is and we're going to find out by the end of this lesson who else is all there go ahead tim and abraham hearkened unto ephron and abraham weighed to ephron the silver which he had named in the audience of the sons of heth 400 shekels of silver current money with the merchant he did it in front of everybody the bankers the legal community the the real estate agent of the time the city hall clerk there was a stamp this area in hebron machpelah where there's a big building now and they're all fighting over it belongs to abraham signed and sealed you can fight all you want but it is there and and still to this day they're fighting over it because as soon as the next generation comes, ah, we don't particularly like you. You know, it'll be like us owning a big piece of property or you own a big piece of property and the neighbor goes, hey, can we just drive across that little corner over there and we're going to build a house down there? You know, that's no problem, no problem. And all of a sudden, you know, your kids come along and they, hey, we don't like them driving over that little piece over there. You know, and then all of a sudden it, it turns into a big show, a big um, poop show. Anyway, you get and seeing what I'm saying. Contract is a big thing. The word, your, someone's word doesn't mean much anymore. And it's unfortunate, but that's the way she goes. A handshake should mean something. Look the person in the eye. It's got to be on paper. Get a contract on paper. Witnesses filed somewhere. Go ahead, Tim. And the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field and the cave which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field, that were in all the borders round about, were made sure. So he got it surveyed. Surveyed, stamped, this is my spot. And they're making fun of him a little bit. That's 400 shekels. What is that? Like, we're a rich, God-blessed man here. And we have some rich heathen people here. And this guy's oh, way down there, that little spot down there. Well, it did mean something. Because today in Hebron, they still fight like crazy. But this is would have been surveyed and notarized, you name it, legalized. Go ahead, Tammy. Unto Abraham for a possession in the presence of the children of Heth before all that went in at the gate of his city. So there you go. Abraham owns that spot over there and, you know, walk around it. Go ahead, Tim. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah, before Mamre, the same is Hebron in the land of Canaan. Lots of mourning, lots of big crocodile tears. I'm almost got some going myself. And this is just, Sarah was such an awesome chick. Always had, always had Abram's back. Was always there through all those trials of faith and the promises and, and dealing with Hagar and just trying to be a good girl and not taunting her. Not being like, here's, here's one of my favorites. What is it? You need to speak towards the mic okay, and stop covering uh, the mic. All right, all right. Well, proverb, proverb, proverb twenty-seven, fifteen: a continual dropping in a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. <laughs> Let me tell you, what's it like going outside and trying to get stuff done, and it just won't stop raining. It's such a drag. That's that's what a contentious woman was is in the Bible and Sarah was not a contentious woman and that's that's a proverb that we got up on the wall here um are we done yet 20 and the field and the cave that is therein were made sure unto Abraham for a possession of a burying place by the sons of Heth don't read over this word sure it is an actual legal term and to finish this up we're just gonna it's very difficult not to do this because this becomes something very special. We're going to see who's all buried there and, and what it means. And um, it's in chapter 49 of Genesis. And what it says, who's all buried there, becomes an acrostic. Isaac gets buried there. 
Sarah gets buried there. Rebecca gets buried there. Abram gets buried there. And Leah gets buried there. And when you put those letters together, that spells Israel. And the E-L at the end means God. So you have an acrostic where these people are buried in this sacred place in Hebron where all the fighting is going on. Isaac, Sarah, Rebecca, Abraham, Leah, and the E-L is God. And that's an acrostic that spells Israel. And Israel is the prince that prevails with God. Isn't that just the greatest thing? And um, well, that's all for today, Tammy. Let's do a little wrap-up. Michael and I hope you enjoyed studying with us at Companion Chapel Worldwide Ministry. Um, <laughs> we are a nonprofit organization that promotes teaching the Bible to whomsoever will. If you would like to help spread the word of God by making a donation to this ministry, you can go to our webpage, www.companionchapel.com, go to the Contact Us or About Us page to offer a precious gift. We also have a membership page if you would like to become a member of our many membered body at Companion Chapel Worldwide Ministry. And that includes the many membered body of Christ. And of course, we're a nonprofit organization. We just need to spread the word of God that's in our hearts. And I hope you're enjoying Genesis up to chapter 24 now. And I hope to see you tomorrow. Genesis chapter 24.